good? Yep. All right. Call the meeting to order. Roll call. Beatty. Here. Waters. Here. Brown. Here. Gardner. Here. Zeglin. Here. Okay. Approval of the November meeting agenda. I motion. I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the October meeting minutes. I make motion. I'll second. Motion was made and seconded. Approve the meeting minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Review of claims. I'm going to. I need to kind of point a few things out. Uh, mainly the four or the three clear at the bottom. Um, Actually, the bottom two is what we're, we're going to talk about those under discussion and action items, but I wanted to include them in there in case they were approved. So go to the second page. The two last ones, Woodland Creek Furniture and Concrete Gone Wild. I've included those in the claims, but if you guys decide differently, we can strike those from the claims. When is he coming in, the concrete guy? Yeah, today or tomorrow. He's going to start the project. The, the bathrooms. The bathrooms. Yeah. And this is for the showers and the floors and all the tile work. This or the cement work. All the bathrooms. The two bathrooms. Okay. Only. The two bathrooms only. Yes. Okay, because we haven't. Right. Okay, and that's. So it. that is good. That would be as if we approved the others. This 10,000. Correct. Okay. Does everybody understand that? I do. I do. What, what's going on? Okay. Because he wanted paid up front, correct? Yeah. Half up front. Yeah, I remember that from last month. What computer software are we buying from Amazon? Uh, that's a good question. I think it was for um, the website, the naturalist website. We have to purchase some software and put on there and have, have them installed. Carrie maintains the naturalist website, and so it's like web expressions or something. Um, I've never, I don't even understand what a naturalist website is. It's the first time I've heard of it. Go to the Iowa Association of Naturalists. They've got a website. Okay. And Carrie, Carrie does the maintenance on it. I think, don't, don't hold me to that. Or could it be like Norton or something like that? Yeah, we should be getting that free. So it's, a, it's an Iowa Association of Naturalists. Mm -hmm. So if this is an Iowa Association, why are we paying? But we also it? use it to manage ours. To manipulate to be able to manipulate our website okay the old one the old uh www.henrycountyconservation.com okay all right so like as we put meeting minutes and stuff up there um not min uh don't, not minutes yeah newsletters okay that's where we edit when you look at our my county parks website when you click on newsletters it, it is actually taking you out of that website over to our old one where the newsletters and other information is located. Then when you click back out of that, it brings you back into my, my County Parks. So it looks like one website, My County Parks, okay. but it's actually two. Is the Kinney and Sons, is that the final bill for them? So I just much. didn't know if that was the final bill for him. See, some of this stuff says buildings, and some it says cabins, so it's all cabins, right? Right. I don't know. For so uh, cabins, is there one septic tank, or like separate? No, but uh, so that's what the Kinney's bill was. That was to hook up our sewer and water to the cabins. There is one. When we put this bathroom in back here, uh, whatever it's been, less than ten years ago, we had that septic system designed and big enough so that at a later time we could attach two cabinets to it. Perfect. So, so you're just, that's just attaching to the... Yeah, 700 and some foot of sewer line that had to be trenched in and then also the water, uh, the water trenched in also to each cabin. We did, we went a little bit above, um, we put in a, a curb stock, so a valve like right by this old the, the bathroom that's back here so we could shut everything off this way and then also we put in curb stops at each cabin so i think those curb stops are over a hundred dollars more but we we wanted to be able to isolate uh each cabin if we needed to and then also um the entire both cabins if needed to if we should get 
a, a leak between the bathroom, which is the main line, that valve setting on the main line, and, and between that bathroom and the other cabins. Okay. So, and then it, it, it was a little bit more, it was about $900 more than what they had estimated over a year ago. Yeah, well, that's obvious. I mean, you know, you have those added costs. Yeah. What about the Frank Miller? Are the bills, that's the bills you've got to date on them. There's two of them. The 15000 and Th that the That is for both, both cabins, furnaces, and air conditioning, and all of the, the associated heat runs with it. Perfect. And the, the Woodland Creek furniture, the new one that's added, is that... Um, yeah, that... That that would be for half the furniture, um, for just one no, cabin. Yes, it's it's half the bill, I should say, um, for the furniture for the cabins. And I have got, I've got pictures and stuff here if you want to see. It's just it's wood furniture. Uh, this company, I like them uh, because we can get it stained fairly cheaply. Thirty-five bucks normally is about what it was for a complete finish. Otherwise, it comes raw wood, and it was free shipping on everything to get it here. Perfect. So I thought that was a huge advantage to going with, uh, and it's actually Woodland Creek's log furniture place. And I've talked to them a couple times. They've been great to work with, um, and that's why I've got that one claim on there. That would be half of it. So what we're going to do, some of the, it's all handcrafted, so it takes some of it up to eight weeks to get. And I needed to get it ordered so that I'm thinking, we were talking probably close to the end of February before we, we you know, have it all here. Um, and what they wanted to do is for, for us, for them to proceed with the order, was to pay half, and then when they get ready to, to ship, is the other half would be due. So that's, uh, fine. That, that's why. And I guess I, I can just I explained it right now why that why that bill is on there. If anyone's interested, I've got pictures. I can't get real good pictures of what the furniture looks like. It's just off their website. Um, but it it ends up it ended up. Um, just in a nutshell, we're, we'll have two queen side, uh, two queen beds. This is per cabin. Let me do this per cabin. Two queens per cabin, a nightstand, and then a they call it a bench. So like your luggage when you go into a room, your luggage would sit on that. Then two sets of bunk beds in the other room with one bench there that the lamp will set on. Uh, we come out to the front room. It's a kitchen table with chairs on on either end of the table and then benches on the other two the long sides okay and then in the living room itself will be a queen size futon two end tables a coffee table and two chairs or, uh, lounge chairs or whatever so that is all I think that's pretty reasonable for our furniture 20 and just shy of 23,000 for all of our furniture finished delivered here perfect for both cabins the only thing we're going to be missing yet, guys, is um, we need to still get um, four, four mattress, four queen size mattresses, four box springs, eight twin mattresses for the bunk bed. So the mattresses, that's all we've got as far as furnishings to purchase yet. And I thought we can find those either locally or drapes, somewhere. curtains, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, we may have a little bit of that. Um, Budget-wise, are we where we want to be still? Well, we'll, we'll get to we'll, that. Yeah, let's get to that after. Because it's hard to look like. Then you got down here Frank Miller for five thousand, then Frank Miller for fifteen thousand. I'm not really for sure. Their bill was twenty thousand. If you combine those two, that's what their estimate was on those. And I'm not really for sure. And they both came. Both bills came in as sheet metal. Because it's really hard to go through this and look at what the cabins cost. Because it just it's just all over. Yeah, that's that's why we got this wrap There's another sheet. There's a oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. which we'll get to in the cabinet. All right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, okay, do we have a uh, any other questions on the claims? Yeah, the Amazon bill for six hundred and forty-one. What's that? Uh, six hundred and forty-one would be two TVs, two wall brackets for the new cabins. Okay. I'm missing something else. HDMI. HDMI cord or cables. Okay. You got no other questions on the claims? Do I have a motion? A motion. I say motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Claims pass. Public forum. Anybody got anything? Nope. All right. 
Discussion items, cabin, construction, update. Okay, so here's my list. So our HVAC systems in both of them are finished. They're in a complete. We do need to call them back, Frank Miller. They put in just temporary thermostats in there, ones that will, you, we can beat and bang around. Uh, the, the new ones are still in the basement. Um, other than that, uh, I, was, I was really happy with the work. I think they did a great job. Um, so our HVAC system is complete. Our electric uh, passed the rough-in inspection. <coughs> so we, all the electric is roughed in. Um, the state inspector came in. The only thing he, we had to move that we didn't, let me rephrase that. The only thing Mount Pleasant Electric had to move was the plug-in for the dishwasher. Cannot be behind it. It's got to be in the cabinet next to it. So we had to move that plug in. Other than that, uh, he was happy with everything. Okay. Insulation, uh, Prairie, uh, Prairie State's insulation was in last week. Both cabins, the uh, exterior walls are all foamed in place, three inch foam in the exterior walls. And we ran them down and did the uh, rim joist in the basement. Um, and it, I mean, we've got the heat on in those now. It, it, it's amazing, it made a huge difference, of course. Um, and they're under budget, is that right? They There's something be. wrong with that on here. What's on this insta installation? That's oh, I don't have the bills yet for them. Okay, so that's okay. just... That was... Um, so what's it? that 6036 is that the estimate? That that's their estimate, Okay. which I, I know is going to be less than that because at the time we had them doing the ceiling in the... Okay. Um, so I, I just didn't carry that over. Okay. I don't want to carry that over till I get it because it'll it kind of skews our percentages on that. Um, the ceilings we started to get the drywall uh, in place on those, and then uh, Kenny Wilson's in place to plaster. He was hoping to do it this weekend, but we're not going to make it. Uh, get, getting all the drywall up, and then it needs to be insulated on. That's blown in insulation on top of those. He needs the insulation, and so. Um, we'll more than likely be plastering these after Thanksgiving. Um, also Friday, the uh, Crable uh, seamless gutters came in, so the, the eaves and the gutters are all on them. Um, and then all, the last thing is our plumbing is near completion. We've got to still run the vent pipe through the roof, but other than that, everything in the basement, all of our uh, uh, fixtures upstairs have been rough plumbed in, so we're, we're good to go on those. Um, and then you have to run the vent through the roof. Yes. That's code. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it's so far out from the building and all this stuff. And okay. Our old cabins back there, Tony, we vented them out the back mm -hmm. without going through it. Um, I don't want to have to go. I, I don't think it would work here. Okay. That's why we're going to go through the, through the roof on them. I know we're, n none of us are hip on putting a hole in the roof, but... Uh, it that's looks how they like, do houses too. Yeah, the boot that we got, the boot that's designed to go on metal roofing and, and over that pipe, I, th I think it'll, I think we'll be fine with it. Um, so with that sheet, looking at the sheet, I kind of went through, I made some notes here on uh, the red, of course, are, are items that we're over budget on, the green mean, meaning we're under, um, and those were just some of the things that we had coming up, uh, or, or the way things are kind of playing out a little bit. Um, as far as the insulation again, Tony, yeah, I'm think I'm guessing that we're going to be somewhere around four thousand uh, for the to insulate. And this is, guys, this is just all based on one cabin. Um, about four thousand to insulate those. We've still got to purchase all the blown-in insulation. Um, and their last quote after we took everything off was about thirty-one hundred dollars to have the foam-in insulation put in, which was, as you can see, not quite half of what the, what it initially was. Because we also had them doing the uh, crawl space underneath uh, before we put the full basement in, so you know there it was quite a bit less. Um, we we don't have we've just been uh, Mount Pleasant Electric has just been bringing the uh, electrical supplies in. Uh, what we've got to do now is they've got to come back and pick up what's left over, and then we'll start to finalize a little bit on electrical uh, cost. Um, as far as plumbing fixtures, the only thing we need yet is a, uh, we've got to get the kitchen sink yet, and then faucets for the bathroom sink, and then the kitchen sink. Um, and this, this gets into one thing with the interior flooring. Um, 
what I'd like to do, what we, and this is going to come, we can, I guess we can make the decision under action item, items, but to discuss it now, um, I went back with uh, Lyle Manning with uh, Concrete Gone Wild. He's, he's the, the, the company that's doing the bathrooms, full concrete. And I got to thinking, we're struggling to find a laminate flooring, because that was our intention, was to put laminate flooring down through, uh, throughout the rest of these uh, cabins, that finding laminate flooring that is waterproof, that's going to stand up, you know, buying a commercial grade, um, you, you know, without, with, with us being able to install it. So that means we're pretty limited. It's going to be Lowe's, Menards, um, something like that. We've got to purchase this stuff through to install it. Uh, once we get up to the true commercial stuff, it's, it's priced so out of the ballpark that it just seems senseless. And again, then we come back to the same thing. How soon is that going to wear out? It may have a five-year commercial warranty with it, but are, are we through it in five years? Or does it go 10 and then we're replacing everything in there? Um, the more I got to thinking about Lyle, and his, what he can do is entire concrete floors throughout that. It just seemed to make more sense to me that we went to something like that. Can he stamp them like the wood? Like we have that at Old Threshers and it's beautiful. So what I've talked a while about, so the bathrooms, you remember there, that's going to be kind of that rocks, it's got a rock design. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll call it a rock design. What I've talked a while is in the, as you come down the hallway, so you come in the back door or the south door to those cabins, the hallway and then into the, the living room and the, the kitchen will be a wide um, old plank board looking concrete, stamped concrete. Mm -hmm. He'll stain it, he, we can do whatever we want with it. Um, the bedrooms, we're going to go back, we're going to turn those boards 90 degrees and then go to the narrow, the narrow planking. And it's, I, I, I never thought to get some picker to grab some photos of it, but it's old, I mean you see the nails in it, it's it's rotted, it looks like, it's, it's, but it's smooth. When I say rotted, that sounds like, oh boy, that's going to be rough. But it's not. It's just in the, it's a light texture, but it's enough to give it definition. These are cement planking? It's so all concrete. No, yeah. he's going to. So, but my question is, why are you so worried about all this being waterproof? It's going to be in a flood zone? Or? Not in the flood zone, but Tim, you got to realize the people that will be using these. Our old cabins are concrete floors, and they're wearing through the epoxy, they wore through the epoxy that's there already. That's what I'm not thinking okay, yeah. laminate's gonna hold up. And I know carpet was out of the question. Right, for keeping clean and stuff. But laminate is not going to hold up. If we put these concrete floors in, I don't think we gotta touch them again and, you know. Is the structure okay for the concrete? Is yeah, I checked, I said, I, I'm a little concerned about weight and, and Lyle has done enough, he's done this for 20 some years now, the, these concrete floors and walls and rooms and everything, and he said, it does not add, because he's only adding about, I think he said, at most three quarters of an inch of concrete across this, the entire floor. He said, you know, a good heavy carpet and padding, he said, you're probably talking close to the same weight on it. So as far as like our structure of it, he doesn't have a problem with it. He said, you'll be fine. He's put, he, you know, he puts this in all over. Um, the only here, here, the the fall or the, the the catch to this is it's quite a bit more than what uh, we had. What I had budgeted for laminate flooring was about five thousand per cabin, and what he is saying at he discounted it for us already, and his price is about ten thousand per cabin for concrete floors. How far over budget are we now? Uh, we're right at it. We're like six tenths of a percent over. If we go to concrete floors, it'll put us about 12% pending, you know, like I said, I don't have the insulation in that I know is coming in cheaper. I don't have this other stuff that I know is coming in cheaper, but I haven't added it in until I get the bills. Um, I'm just well, surprised about the wear and tear. I mean, when you, when you consider how much use that cabin gets compared to hotels and motels and, and, and businesses uptown would be like, you know, wouldn't even be a comparison. And you know, what would it what would it cost compared to like uh, um, tile floors? Because that's basically what cement floors are. They're just tile floors. I don't know. I didn't I didn't take the time to, to price out putting tile in these all these cabins. Would you know how to do ceramic tile and yeah, cut I, it? And yeah. Have you seen when you walk into Old Threshers? You know, 
when you walk in, it they look like rustic planks and they look like they have the nail holes. Yeah. And that's it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And nice. I mean, I look at just being an old thresher's. Look at how much traffic we get, and it's lasted for oh, yeah. years and years. Hey, it's nice. And it's expensive. That's what I got. That's what my concern. Mm -hmm. like well, but I, I look at it as an investment in the future. I do because too. Because we put concrete down now. Yeah. It, it, when it comes to flooring, you're you're going to get what you pay for. I agree. Period. End of story. So yeah. you put cheap in. You know, ten years down the road, we're going to be putting that money back in plus inflation costs Maybe. to replace the floor again. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've already got. You know, we're wearing through epoxy. Well, and if you look at you know, ten to fifteen percent uh, over, you pretty much plan on that, that with that. any no. kind of housing yeah. project. <laughs> well, that's not. Yeah. If we ended up ten to fifteen percent over, that's very realistic for building a building anyway, because I, I, that's what they tell you. And to do that, I, I, I'm comfortable with being that that amount over because we're attributing just to the floors. Right. Most of it, we're right on budget, and and that was eighteen months ago that we started collecting right. these bills, and that's what. I knew we were going to get into this. You know, yeah. we're going to have inflation. The furnaces themselves went up five percent. Well, look at our and door. Look at having to three percent. Look at having to do the ADA compliant patio doors. You know, that was more. Yeah, yeah. We weren't planning on that. And mm -hmm. there's those little costs that it's, you just do. We have the money. Yeah, we got the money. But mm -hmm. I, you know, that's not an issue. When we started this project, we were looking at, you know, ninety-two to ninety-five thousand dollars per cabin. And we're going to be bumping that up to more like a hundred to one hundred and two thousand per cabin, and it, like I said, we're going to attribute it all to floors that are going to outlast our lifetime. Well, well and I hate so. to start skipping, you know, especially it's it's, it's going to last, and then and cosmetically when people walk in, you know, it's going to look nice. And it's that's what we're getting, getting into with long. our old yeah. cabins. Yeah. Isn't, I don't. You walk in now, and I know. Megan takes great, she does a good, good job cleaning them. You know, that, that epoxy has worn off, so you're seeing bare concrete through them. And then the pits in it, you know, the little chips and stuff, they fill full of dirt. So it's a tan floor, now with dark spots all over it. And to me, it just looks absolutely tacky. It looks yeah. unkept. Yeah. You know, we haven't had any complaints on it, but I don't think we need to wait for it to get to that point. Right. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with it. I need to check some people to see if how we make. When, and we don't not only have that problem with the uh, cabins back here. Our shower house, we put the same epoxy on the floor, and they wore through that a long time ago with all the sand and mud and stuff uh, in the shower house on the south shore. And that it, the floor down there looks bad. It just it, it looks there's a guy that can come in and, and uh, he polishes uh, cement and gets it off and then puts a stain in it like. It really looks nice. I've seen some professional buildings like that. Well, and that's what Lyle, Lyle that's part of his, what yeah. he does too, is he, he'd be able to, I, I started in with him, I'm like, Lyle, let's just, I yeah. need to get this done first. Right. Yeah. I need right. to get this yeah. done first. So um, that's where we're at with these cabins. Um, you know, I think we're still probably looking at, you know, February or March opening on them. We'll probably delay it a little bit more until where it gets nice out. We can have a grand opening on them. Um, I talked to Ruby Lawn Care. They're going to come in, and we'll buy the fertilizer from them. They're going to get everything fertilized yet this fall with no grass seed. Then come back. We'll plant it, it uh, next spring. We'll get the grass in, um, and then I've also talked to them about uh, a, 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 I guess I call it professional grade edging to go around those so that, um, you know, with the, the slope that's there, we've got to be able to protect that slope. And the easiest way to do that is with edging, uh, ground, uh, or uh, matting, and rock, you know, the river rock on top with some plants in it. So, um, you know, I've kind of been thinking on that and adding that into the cost of these also. Um, so we, we've got that to do. You Will know, it be tiered? No, it just, right now, I've got, we've got the dirt pretty well, well, we've got the grade pretty well set on them. It's just a matter of defining where our, our lawn edging is going to go in. We've still got to build the, the ramps off the back to make them truly handicap accessible. Um, and it looks like we're going to be about 12 foot ramps on these. We're going to be 12 foot out to get that one inch and one foot slope uh, right. Uh, we're going to be hedging it just a little bit because I think we're closer to 15, 16 inches tall step up on them. So. You know, that we don't have room to go that far out with the ramp, so um, 
you know, I think we'll be all right. We'll, we'll just have to mess with that a little bit as we as we get to the end. That landscaping and all that is that figured in the budget anywhere yet? No, no, no. So you know, we still we've you know that's something that we might fall over into just our our regular uh, maintenance construction and maintenance project. We may we may run it under that because not only do we have the REAP or, and you know the money that we're pulling this out of, but we've got. Um, our our revenue from our camping fees that's setting in a pot too that is money that we could use toward it too not to run everything i mean we're far from running anything yeah. into a zero balance with these but um you know i i knew that the more we got into these and when i started getting estimates like i said 18 months ago and i see furnaces five percent and then within within about eight months the trust is on them you know, they were up 3%, and there's, you know, a myriad of excuses right. why. You know, uh, we had a tornado here, a flooding here, and the lumber prices go up, you know, whatever reason that is. Or they, just because we can. Or we can, but <laughs> normally it's, a, it's attributed to something. Yeah. There's a reason. So your recommendation to us is the interior floors be the concrete? I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we got that coming up in the action item, sir. Yep. Any other discussion or questions about cabins? No. No? Okay. Sugar, maple, and white oak. So what the, what the um, sugar, maple, and white oak cabins, um, this, is, this was something that we put into the budget. Um, I mentioned to you is we needed to do something with the sidewalks going up to those the, the old cabins. What we did as kind of a a cheap way of putting a sidewalk in is when they put in the septic system they had to break through a bunch of, of uh, limestone rock you know and sheets and so we thought oh here's our sidewalk so we use this and we use those sheets of rocks to put our sidewalk and then actually kind of the, the step up into the cabins well you know the more that's been out it's been what uh, 12 years that, that's not so good we <laughs> So I had Bill Young came back in and he poured uh, a sidewalk that comes from the parking, the two parking spots, makes kind of a loop around, and then he has a nice pad in front of the steps going up into them. So we've added that. And then also we added, um, we're going to add TVs to both those cabins. Um, we've got the satellite dish up. None of the satellite dish didn't cost us anything. The TVs and the brackets and everything for the walls for both cabins ended up less than four hundred dollars. Um, and then um, I had Becky and Carrie, and I think I don't know if Danica helped on it either, but went back in. We've got new curtains up in them. The other ones were faded. Um, uh, just kind of sprucing those up. I don't want to get into the situation where when these open, these are like wow, and the hell with the other ones. We're not right. going to yeah. mess with those. I want I want to be you know, have similar amenities in these old ones so that they keep, they, they continue to be rented along with the new ones. You know, if you want a cheaper option, here's these. And then we're also, we did have one of the heat cool units in those uh, cabins. It actually went the opposite. Normally we have problems with the heat side of those. And they are, they are essentially a window air conditioner yeah. through, the, through the walls of those. I call them PTAC units, I got corrected. They're not even a PTAC because if you think in a motel room, they're long. PTAC units are long and narrow. Mm -hmm. and they don't stick out much. These are like a window air conditioner. And the problem we have on them is that it's, it's a resistant heat on the heat side. So there's electrical elements in there that heat up, and that's where we get our heat from in these. This last one, um, normally the heat goes out. We burn something up in a board, and we don't have heat out of that unit. This one went the other way. The board burned up, and it stuck on heat. And you couldn't oh, shut no. it off. Outside of unplugging it, that's the only way you shut it off. There's a remote form, and there's also the keypad on them. You could shut that unit off. The screen was blank, and that thing would still put out heat. It'd still run. You reached down and unplugged it, it quit. Well, when Brian Leslie, uh, he's really good with those units, he looked at that, he goes, the, the uh, uh, computer board in it is just black. He said it burned up. And it's something, so we're, he's getting us prices on the idea of switching those over maybe later this, this summer or whatever to conventional furnaces, conventional air conditioners, and get away from those damn Peter, uh, air conditioner, window air conditioners, what they are. 
We never have a problem with the cooling side of it. It's always the heat side. And we also, they're terribly inefficient because our bills in the dead of winter will be, heating bills on one cabin will be three to $350, $400 a month. So they are terribly inefficient, and if we can get in, that's horrible. Yeah, and if we can get into a, a standard, a conventional forced air furnace, the problem is there's no duct work or anything in these yeah. cabins. But you know, um, Brian's been working on that, and he thinks he's got a way around that to be able to go up into the loft. And you know that how that how that roof slopes. We've got a lot of dead space yeah. over here next to the end, and utilizing that. For duct work. Oh, for the duct and work. Yeah. For duct work. Well, you just buy a round tube duct work, too. Yep. Yeah. Just lay in the attic. That's what they use a yeah. lot. And then we'll box it in with wood so, you know, oh, it looks good. Yeah. Everything looks good, but yet we've got a conventional furnace, a conventional air conditioner in it. Well, um, it's that's, just, that's crazy. On that. And I think those yeah. air right. conditioning the heat goes long. I mean, those air conditioning units alone, I know the last one we purchased was $1,800. Uh, I'm keeping a 3,000 square foot house for that one. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. I think we can do that with furnaces. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's where we're that I just wanted to update you guys on as far as the, the sugar maple and white oak, what we've up uh, we've upgraded those. I think that's smart. I and do. I think ne next next once next spring, you know, I was really hoping we can get to it this past summer. Uh, we'll power wash them and then um, re re restain them, refinish them. And they should look good. The new sidewalks in there. We've got a little bit of work to do the drive, and, and you got a really good point. Though. I mean, you know, so many uh, new years <laughs> the old ones. always want the new ones. So mm -hmm. you don't, right. You don't keep them up. You know, they're just. And if we now, if we can go back onto my, we'll go back onto my county parks and under amenities, <clears throat> satellite TV, right. you know, and yeah. add those amenities mm -hmm. to them. Uh, the other thing is, I forgot to mention too, is we're going to go to a. Uh, it's not, it, it, it's a, it looks like a full-size refrigerator shrunk down. Right now we have just a taller dorm refrigerator in them. And I feel sorry because about at least once a month, Megan's got to go in and defrost those. Yeah. Because the freezer sets inside the, the uh, refrigerator itself. You open the door, and, you know, that builds up pretty soon. Nothing is shutting. And we just, again, yeah, it, was, right it worked for us. Yeah. But um, I, we noticed at Menards that they've got, I think they're like seven cubic foot. Uh, refrigerators and you can get them with the freezer on the bottom they just look like a full-size refrigerator shrunk down nice yeah. and we found that they'll fit in there you know we've just got to find a place to to move the microwave right now it sits on top of the refrigerator we just need to get it over by the stove or whatever so um, that's something else that we're going to do to just to kind of upgrade those and, yeah. and, and keep them appealing to, mm -hmm. to people that's good okay uh, other Caleb yeah, so I know we've been talking about, you know, the improvements to waterworks. And so today I printed off a map to kind of give you an idea what, you know, the, it looks like from above with the contour lines on there. Um, so I'll come around here so you guys can. So this is, I should have probably put a Nora Bang on here, but so this is kind of the area we were looking at here. Mm -hmm. Um, so out the white lines, you can really see this is obviously a hillside. The closer the lines are, the steeper it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see definitely here, this is a drainage or a draw running down. Um, as you can see really, the campground, like I was saying in the last meeting, there's hardly any lines. And even over here at the wetland on the neighbors, there's really not much there. So. The white lines are two foot, and then between the black lines is represents ten feet. So you can definitely see the ridge to the north that is pretty steep. Um, but there's really not many lines, uh, kind of where we're looking. You know, maybe to put the, the campground, or you know, I know we had mentioned last time about possibly containing water to build a wetland or something like that. So it really, it's interesting to see. You know, the only thing I can think of is uh, it's been manipulated and even over here building the wetland on the neighbors that, you know, the LIDAR imagery is not because obviously it's, you know, via satellite. Mm -hmm. um, it's really doesn't show a good representation of, you know, the lay, lay of the land, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Um, but 
John, have you have you talked to Doug? I chance? haven't had a chance. I've got a note on my desk to get in and talk so to him. So I was going to try to pull him aside before I came down here, but he was supposed to go to Fairfield today, and he was meeting with everybody under the moon. So I couldn't get him pulled away long enough to discuss this. But I would say probably, you know, if we're interested in, you know, maybe trying to redo that area, I think is a cottonwood trees in yeah. that area right now. Um, you know, probably we could probably still try to get him out there yet this fall, winter, really winter. Winter, <laughs> no fall, Based winter. <laughs> the current conditions outside, but at least have him, you know, him and maybe Jason Steele come out. I don't know, depending if it will warm back up maybe a little bit, we could maybe pull some soil samples, might have to wait till spring, but to see whether or not they're hydric and whether or not it would hold water. Obviously, I'm sure it would, you know, because obviously just across the property line, the yellow lines are basically property lines. So I put that on there to kind of give you an idea mm -hmm. uh, where our west property line and north property lines are. But, you know, have Doug come out, take a look at it, maybe Jason Steele, and see, you know, if we could maybe put in a wetland or something. I don't know. Just, I guess I'm talking out loud, but... You know, instead of maybe just focusing on the campground as we were talking last time when we went down there a couple months ago to look at the whole parcel and see what we can do and mix it all together. So, so the hy the hydrology report is really what we we're, we're kind of waiting to see yeah. now whether we can or cannot. But I mean, you know, for educational that. purposes, it would be awesome if we could build a wetland in there. You know, yeah, have be. students down there and you know talk about all the fun water creatures and stuff like that. So I mean, it, it's something you know that we can look into. Not saying it is going to work, but it's something that we can definitely. Uh, contact NRCS and see what our options are and you know it doesn't hurt to ask it, they might say no it's not going to work but something that we can look into anyway thanks for thank you no problem yeah, that is an interesting concept. it is yeah I just I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to see that I wasn't either and it's yeah I don't know. okay any other discussion? I, one thing for next month, guys, uh, it's that wonderful time of year, not the holiday budget. Oh, so yeah. I'll be handing out anything, budget considerations that you may have, things that you'd you know, like to see be included in the budget. And then along with that, I'll get everyone their, their salary worksheets again. And we can go through that again. Mm -hmm. You guys can go through that. So I haven't got my packet yet, so we... We, we might be delaying this a little bit from the auditor's office. The budget packet. Really, so really digging into all that stuff kind of hard. Now, that's coming it? up next next yeah. month. Yeah. Well, this is going to be interesting. Be yeah. oh. Well, they got they, they got a lot of things. You know. I, I haven't heard. Is there? Well, I think that's where it's all coming from. You know, we've been for years been supporting that. Healthy Henry County Center. Oh, their donations that you're not supposed to make. Yeah, <laughs> they say well, you can't donate taxpayers' money to nonprofit. You can't donate taxpayers' money to anything. It's taxpayers' mm -hmm. money. You're not supposed to donate it. You know, and and they've been doing that for. And I think this is all coming from. All so that now, whoa, wait, wait, back up. <clears throat> so you're saying that. The Henry County has been donating money. The supervisors and the hospital have been donating money for years to the healthy Henry County, whatever you call it, yeah. board. Yeah, that's how it's, it's a 501c3. That's how it's fi been financed. It's always been financed that way. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and there were, sounds like there may be some other ones out there also. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is, it's more than just healthy Henry County. Yeah. So we've got the pleasure of budgets coming up. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Action items, flooring. Any other discussion on the flooring or no? Just questions. I, I just want to clarify, make sure that that's clear. That for for those cabins, it would be ten thousand dollars more to do all the floors, the bedrooms and the hallways and kitchen and living room uh, per cabin. It's ten thousand per cabin, and that was with uh, Lyle's giving us about 
a thousand dollar discount on those uh, cabinets. And we're talking about the interior. We're not talking about the budget, the, the bills you want us to approve that weren't on the agenda, right? No, that's already that, okay. Yeah. Okay, I just want to be sure. Okay. Well, I'm in favor of it. Good. I didn't make a motion, but that's my discussion. Is that I think looking ahead to the future, that's always my concern with everything. I think people don't pass these bond issues and don't do these things because they never think ahead. And they never think, oh, well, you know what? Everything wears out and everything has a time limit. I like the fact that it's concrete. And I know just from looking at Old Rushers, the traffic that we get and how beautiful. I asked Terry, how long has that been there? Because it took me a while to realize it was stamped flooring because it has the little rivets like their nails and stuff. It's beautiful. And he's like, oh, cat, probably 15 years. And with the traffic we get, it's beautiful. Yeah. A little mopping it just with water and it's looks like pretty old boards. It's, it's beautiful. Like again, it yeah. does. It's gorgeous. It's like new old again. Yeah, new old boards. I love it. Okay, so, so. you made a motion to approve the I make the a motion to approve the floors. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, motion made. You've seconded to approve the concrete floors for the new cabins. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Any other action items? Not that I have. Want to say anything about Mud Creek? I guess I can since I drive by there quite often. So we had a gentleman with um, I can't Eagle, yeah, Eagle, Eagle Scouts um, said that he was going to kind of spruce up Mud Creek Recreation Area. Um, I went by there within the last week and it looks like he has removed, painted the, the building, um, which there was some graffiti that said Bamboo Gang in big letters across the side <laughs> of it. Uh, very visible from the road. Um, it looks like, I think he was supposed to replace some of the rotten plywood on kind of like the dividers between the men and women's bathrooms. I can't remember, yeah, but I, I didn't. I, I will say I didn't pull in there, but it looked a lot better. Um, just here recently, I think yeah, it was the last couple of weeks. I've kind of been cutting through there to and from Geo, so nice. looked a lot better. So Did we pay for that? I mean, we know they do it all on their own as you Eagle Scouts. Raise the money and go buy the supplies to do all that. Really? Yeah. Good for him. <laughs> so I did, he had called. Uh, Connor had called and said that he had was starting it, he, he finally got an approval through the Boy Scout board or whatever and that um, he was getting that started and then he's got some trail work to do yet and then also some bracing. It was more decorative than yeah. it is anything else on the shelter house. Um, so I think he's making it happen. That's great. Yeah. I do have one thing that I should have mentioned under um, Bringing up restrooms. I don't know. Did you go by the restroom in Lowell? Our new uh, restroom? I haven't been by there recently, no. Uh, gosh. It had to be shortly after the last board meeting. Somebody decided to run it over. <gasps> oh, yeah. So it's destroyed. They pulled down and they hit it hard enough. It's knocked it clear off. The, oh. Everything, I mean, it, it just it busted wow. it up. I think. We're, Tony and I are hoping we can get that thing at least loaded back onto a trailer and back here to see if we can make repairs to it. Um, they hit it on one side. Uh, that was all, um, uh, um, what I want to call it, it's cement board, um, engineered siding. It, sh it shattered a bunch of that. Uh, you know, it's just... They don't know who did it. No, we got down there. The guy that next, uh, lives next door to it that watches it, he said, I didn't even hear it. It happened in the middle of the night. He said, I didn't even hear it. Man, they had to, and there's ruts about yay deep. I mean, they smacked it hard. My guess is somebody pulled down in there, had to use it, maybe had their beer goggles on. Yeah. And bam, hit it. Oh, crap. And then try and get out of there. Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> the big dent pipe on the back, it actually snapped and busted it up. Oh, they had to geez. change it. They smacked it pretty good. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they had to smack it. It's separated in that corner and then. You couldn't get the door open, and everything's cattywampus in it now. So, like I said, we're we're going to go down and see probably in the spring if we can pull it back together enough to get it anchored so that we can go back and pick it up and set it back on the trailer, bring it back here, make repairs, and and back there. But uh, mm. it made a lot of people pretty angry when that new bathroom was. They were pretty yeah. proud of that bathroom. The the people of the residents of Lowell, and then yeah. wake up one morning on a Sunday morning, and it's. So when do you think that happened? It happened the Saturday night. Okay. Do you turn that into police? 
Yes, the sheriff's department was, yeah. So they turn it into the bo auto body shops and stuff just in case someone. I know the chances of finding them are slim to none. I just wondered how that worked. Mm -hmm. Do you have insurance for things like that? Oh, it's like $5,000 deductible. Yeah. And that's, we built yeah. that for less. <laughs> right. You know, it's just the, the thought of the, you know, yeah. to go back all through. Yeah, you home. did all that. It looks great. And then everyone was taking look. I did not realize we went, finally got the door open on it. Somebody's made shelves in there, and there was Aww. new paper. There was <laughs> like a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> they took care of it. They took, yeah, yeah. Whoever, I don't know if it was the neighbors. Tim Meyer is who we, you know, if he needs supplies or whatever, and he he'd not been calling us about supplies, but I mean, there's a whole Aww. new there. Twelve rolls of toilet paper set yeah. there, and. They really. Mm -hmm. That's why they're so upset. Probably because they took yeah. community effort to take care of that. And oh, that's too bad. So can you camp down there? Yes, and, and yeah, we leave. Okay. Yep. And our same rules apply. 14 days. Okay. Oh, so I was wondering because yeah, this summer I was floating from Boylston down the wall, and I noticed there was quite a few people. We get a group. I can't yes. remember where they're out of, but they kind of do it annually. Yeah. It was camp. Memorial Day weekend. This one. We were they set up tents and RVs. Yeah, and that's. And I, I was pretty sure you could. You could, you could add on to it. So you get, you know, What's like, that? Maybe you fix that bad. You like add on to it. Make the guy like a bunkhouse in there. <laughs> well, I think what we're going to do is we've got some concrete. I was going to say. Yeah, 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 you know, oh, I yeah. said we're going to go. I said we'll we'll put about 36 inches of that in the ground right there. Right. So if somebody does has their beer goggles on and comes around the corner, they're they're not going to make it at least to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, they'll pile it up in those curb or those. Huh. <laughs> or like a concrete pole. All we had right. to do that in front of yeah, we had to do that in front of our buildings yeah. for that reason. Naturalist report. I think Danica had another program. Carrie and Becky are at um, oh gosh. It's the uh, what do they call it? E commerce symposium. So our my county parks, every year they have a, a meeting and they go over the new things that are coming up and then counties that are coming on board. To it, it's a chance for them to that wonderful term network with counties that are already on it. So, uh, Carrie and Becky are up at that, and I said Danica. So, as far as they're reported, it is what it is. <laughs> and I, um, she had made mention on the second page about canceling the egg corn I saw that on events and stuff and the Christmas party, and I, I think that's the right direction. I, I think so too. What we had talked about that, Tony, uh, Carrie, and I, I said, let's 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 just let it slide let's let it go for a couple of years and see if we can't bring it back with renewed interest um just i just throw a seat out there in regards to this um i would like to see us do something for our volunteers everywhere i don't know i know we've had like a holiday thing in the past for volunteers and stuff like that but i don't know as we've ever built it build it as volunteer appreciation yeah um, i i'm just i'm just you know i'm kind of i just look at it and it's like what do we do outside of thank you letters and saying thank you and stuff what do we do for all of our volunteers because we got thousands of hours coming out here um let, let me tell you what we used to do so we used to have a volunteer banquet and we would have it in the nature center we would purchase all the food bring it in we just need to figure out I, i'm i'm all for being able to to have something official to thank all these people and to to um recognize recognize them. recognize them what we started to get into is we got into cat fights, Tony. Because you volunteered in 2017, but not 18, and you would still show up at the banquet. And it became, we had no start, we had no end. Mm -hmm. If you volunteered for us, and it, I mean, it got so, it was a huge deal. I mean, we're serving several hundred people. Oh. Even though only maybe 50 of them actually volunteered that particular year. calendar year or fiscal year. That could Whatever. be an opportunity to grab them other ones that haven't volunteered and say, hey, Well, and that, that's <laughs> <the thing. laughs> you're coming and eating our food. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
And if we also included that's so sure it was that's a good better way to look at it. <laughs> it was not only people that volunteered, say, in the nature center or whatever, um, but also people that donated. Donated, yes. You know, so yes, yeah. it, it 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 got big. Okay. It got big. Um, so we, we could put some there control some, measures in there. We we have to. Knowing okay. what we, we've done in the past, we have to. When you did it, did you do like, um, like I'll use 2018 because we're in 2018. Did it, when you, like however you advertised it, did you say for all 2018 volunteers or donors, did you, and it still didn't work. I mean, I'm just thinking of how no, we'll have to do exactly it. You're exactly right because we would put in our 2018 and we would send um, postcards out. Right. You know, we we had that list. People who volunteered in the nature center, helped with programs or whatever. Mm -hmm. We had that list. We would get phone calls saying, "Geez, I donated a thousand dollars, but not in eighteen and seventeen. Well, how do you tell them? No. Right. You know, it was just it's like, oh yeah, I'm, we're sorry, we forgot you. You know, and we're backtracking and apologizing, and I'm just like, it's. Yeah. So yeah. we just need to put ground rules. Now that it's been a few years in place, and say, it's for for calendar year 2018. Current. Current. Yeah. Current. You know, but I'm telling you guys, we're going to offend people that in the past, and then you, you know, offend people and then they don't want to donate. They don't, or, or I'm not yeah. going to volunteer. I wasn't, yeah. and we gave them trade. We, I think we did up certificates and we normally found some trick in a ballpoint pen or we had some pins made that said you know, it was a nature center logo, just, just trinkets. You know, and we hand it out to everyone, and I mean, it was a great time. It was a great time, um, but the main we got to the point where we didn't have. That was before the north half of the nature center was finished. We couldn't fit them all in anymore. Wow. You know, and it became a week planning. You know, a, to get set up and to get going and finishing up. And uh, How, what if we? Okay, because you're still going to get into that, regardless if you bring this back. I'm just thinking of even how it goes for us and how that's going to be. You're always going to have those people that are going to come just because. What if, I mean, I know it's going to be extra work for you guys, but what if you think ahead and you put up a volunteer list and we, we ask, will you be willing to donate hours to us or will you be able to help with our programs? Can we do something so that perhaps we can regain some of those volunteers that you're going to get the ones the ones that are going to be appreciated are going to be there mm -hmm. but the ones that are just coming to come because in the past 30 years i my grandpa donated a wagon or i mean you know yeah. could we have a sign up where we could as a board just say hey it'd be nice to get you back could we would you sign, sign up to uh, yeah i mean just something yeah, I wonder, to it might be something I, i'll make some Notes here. I wonder if it's something we could run through uh, my county parks, you know, to sign up for. The, but again, I, I, I know. Just know I, it's yeah, hard to I say. Don't, I don't know if we want to get into that. It's it's hard to say. Hey, can't you can donate this year? Mm -hmm. You can't come to this. Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, you just the same face and the. Not feel what bad. if we well, did a pin? What if we did a pin and we did a? I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be cheaper to do like a little thank you pin, like a little cloisonne or something, and mail it to them with a little certificate than it would be to. Yeah. And I think it's that's probably no different than personal because we do a thank you letter right now. Yes. They yeah. get you know. Uh, I mean, I sign them all. Thank you for volunteering and your hours and you know when the the uh, Mount Pleasant News does their uh, volunteer appreciation uh, edition. You know, we're always, we always buy advertising and place in it. Um, you guys sent us some Omaha steaks or something. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's small? No, we got in trouble for Omaha steaks on our uh, Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Let that dog lie, will you? Do you remember that? Or are you being sarcastic? <laughs> With all the audits going on. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's continue some discussions on this. And, and yeah. I was kind of thinking of a time frame. You know, holidays is not a good time frame. But the January, February that's, that's, time frame, it's kind of a, you know, it, it's a dead time. It's a dead time. This is an indoor event anyway. You yeah. Know, and it's post holiday, so everybody's kind of. And that's, a, uh, that's when we always had it. Uh, yeah. What if you just did like cup, cupcakes and cookies or, or sweets and well, something like or, that? Or we could do, you know, we could maybe provide a meat and then do a potluck. Oh, yeah. And hold the cost down on us so we're not. 
feeding 200 people. But you know, Tony, that's not really an object because we, we pull all that, we use that money from our pot fund. Okay. You know, there, uh -huh. there's plenty of money. I think we, normally we would have it. I think the one time uh, Virgil Heitmeyer may have fried fish up. And so he, he, he went and purchased the fish. He goes, I'll just do this on my own. He purchased it all, and then they had it set up out here, and they were cooking it. And then, you know, people, we just bought the sides and stuff through hy -Vee. Um I know we had uh, Karen Wright one time um, cater it. You know, the cost isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, but that does get uh, rid of a lot of loafers, a lot of nutrients. It really does. When you say, I know some people that have parties every year, and they got into this where, same thing, all these people and then friends of friends of friends. So then they turned into a potluck. We're going to furnish the food. You bring side dishes, and all of a sudden, all the they were like, they didn't come. It got, it really got a lot more manageable because of that. And so, you know, everybody now you got to bring something. Well, then it's like, well, the volunteers wouldn't care. Well, I'll throw it out. Of course, then you're asking the volunteers to volunteer to bring food. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll talk to everyone up here, okay. here too and see see if we. Um, I'm for Virgil doing fish. That sounds delicious. Well, I'm Virgil hungry. Virgil would have to do yeah. long distance now. I would, I'll oh, do the fish. Oh, poor Virgil. I'll do the fish. That'd be great. I'm all for Tony doing the uh, fish. Jimmy Smith was involved with that also. I'd like to make a motion place. now. <laughs> <laughs> Except, you know, if we have a January, February, yeah, I'd you can't expect this case to stand outside cooking fish. Tony just volunteered. What are oh, you I talking about? <laughs> I can't I hear you, John. We got a fire right. I don't want to watch you catch him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other items? Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion made and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 a